Hello besties, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Over the weekend, I started a TikTok of doing how many pages I read in a week and I didn't have any reading vlogs going. I just was mood reading, seeing what books I get through and how many pages I read obviously and being a booktuber, being someone that likes to film everything that they read and make everything into a video, I thought why not make that into a mood reading vlog. And as I make the TikTok, I'll also be talking about it, making a video mood reading this week. other videos going on this week lots of work and editing and stuff to do so while all that's going on I want to see like in the background my personal just reading time what I get through how much I read what books I get into I don't have any like I said reading vlogs really going on right now so nothing specific I have to read over the weekend I didn't know what book I wanted to pick out I was staring at my book cart and my physical TBR for probably like an hour I didn't know what mood I was in but I ended up starting two books starting off our mood read this week it'll be from Monday to Friday because I started the TikTok on Saturday so I already have Saturday and Sunday done technically I did write down my pages I read over the weekend so we can get into that first or actually let's get into the books first so I ended up starting like I said two books the first one is Quicksilver this one is a fantasy I don't really know if it's like romantic -y much I think it, it gets into that I don't know too much about it I got recommended this a few times and the name kept popping up so I was like you know what really gloomy over the weekend it was pouring rain I was like I'm kind of in either a fantasy or mystery mood and I ended up starting this one it's on Kindle Unlimited I don't really know exactly what it's about because I went into it a little bit blind I didn't really read the summary of it so I'll give you what I know right now but I kind of recommend going in blind because where I'm at right now it's definitely like picked up and the story's changed a little and I'm like completely taken by surprise and I'm sure the summary gives that away. I want like the premise of what the beginning of the story is about. You follow Cyrus, our main character, and in the city where she lives she's part of the third which is like the outer part of the city and like the lowest like status there. At the start of the book she is running from a guard and she ends up stealing the guards like part of his like armor basically and she steals it and she gets away from him and then eventually you know she, she's caught. Things escalate from there but the way the story has turned I'm like so interested because it's not what I expected so I recommend going in to it a little bit blind just knowing that kind of forefront and small little prologue of Cyrus. The writing style is very fast paced. I'm really enjoying it. It's a little bit longer. I think it's like 600 something pages but so far I've been reading this one kind of before bed in the morning and then the other book I started is Girl Abroad by Elle Kennedy. I don't know why I ended up starting two books. I wanted to read a romance over the weekend too so I ended up starting both. Like I said this one's more morning and night. This one's during the day. I may start the audio on this one because I'm not very into it. It's about a girl who is going abroad for a semester and she's going Going to London. Once she gets there, she thought that she was going to be living with three girls and it ends up being three guys. I'm not really connected to any of the characters. I'm not too far into it, but what's funny about it is when she got to London and the one of the roommates opened the door and it was a guy, she didn't realize like she was going to be living with guys yet. He was like, hello love or something like that and like his accent obviously and it was reminding me so much of like back in the day Wattpad, the strong accents when you're reading about like a One Direction fanfic or Harry fanfic and it's like, hello love, like oh you're here to live with us now. And it's like all One Direction opened up the door. That was the vibes it was giving. I don't really know why. It's like she just... I don't know. But into the page count from this weekend, on Saturday I started Quicksilver and I got 44 pages into that one. And then Sunday I read to page 115 of Quicksilver. Let me do that math. So I read 71 pages of Quicksilver and then I started Girl Abroad on Sunday and I read 58 pages of that. So I read about 130 on Sunday. Starting this week, we'll see what I get into. I definitely want to start listening to Girl Abroad. I'm about to go clean my closet out. So I'm going to throw on the audiobook of this. It's on Spotify. Like I said, I'm not very connected to the characters of this one. So I think the audiobook will help me get more into it and then I'll probably read this later tonight. This one for some reason is like a bedtime book. It's a before bed book and an early morning book so. So far though I'm really enjoying this one. This one I don't know if it's gonna be a favorite of mine but I'm gonna go listen to it.
about 170 pages in. I was listening to it, like I said, as I was cleaning my room. There's like a lot going on and I don't think I'm really enjoying it. There's like a few different like side plots that are going on. Like it's not all one cohesive story. There's like our main character, Abby, is going through many different things at once. So one of them is obviously the roommates being all guys. So she has a relationship with each one. Each one is very different. Their personalities are different and her relationship with each one, obviously, like I said, is different. And it doesn't really blend very well. Like I thought I was gonna give like new girl vibes. Like they're all, you know, have like a relationship together like as a group but i feel like as a group they don't really like make sense there's one that she's most attracted to so you have that relationship with her roommates going on but then she meets one of her roommates's sister and her friend and her roommate sister is dating this guy who's like the bass player of a band so they go to see the band play and she has a crush on the bass player on her new roommate's sister's boyfriend they're spending time together like i'm all good for like a love triangle but they are dating. They are very clearly dating. And the things that she's like thinking about him, they're talking, like the way they're like interacting with each other. I'm like, where are the boundaries? Like, this is just so crazy. And then there's another plot where she's obviously in school right now and she's doing like this research for one of her classes. And it's kind of like almost a mystery. Like she's trying to figure out the history of one of these like people in like the history of where she is. Like she found this painting and she's trying to find the history of it. She's meeting with these different people. Her and the bass player are like trying to figure it out together. And she's getting like help from one of her roommates. So there's like all these different things going on. And not all of them are really connecting it's like she's flirting with one of her roommates and i think that's like the romance but then she's like flirting with some guy who has a girlfriend and i'm just like girl what is going on and she's also lying to her father like there's so many different plots going on that i can't see it going well i also it's funny because one of the roommates his name is jack and he's australian he's blonde the way they describe him is very very attractive australian and i started this book after if you're watching love island uk literally the night before i started this a guy came into the villa like a bombshell came into the villa his name is harrison he's tall he's He's blonde he's australian everyone says he looks like thor everyone like loves him i start this book jack walks in he's tall he's blonde he's australian very attractive probably giving thor and i'm like okay so now i'm going to picture this guy and listening to it it's interesting because all of the different accents the voice actress is doing and as i'm listening i think they're changing like voice actors because one paragraph or one chapter it sounds like one girl and then it switches to another so i'm wondering if there's two no it just says narrated by it just has one person's name but i swear either her voice is like changing up it literally sounds like two different people and i know they gave different voices to different characters in the book but it literally sounds like someone else is taking over the role and i don't know if it's because like doing the accents and stuff i don't know i do like the audio i think if i wasn't listening to it i'd be a little bit bored maybe i would dnf it i'm not connected to any of these characters i don't like her with any of them and i don't love what she's doing really i don't really know it's definitely different than i expected it to be but i'm gonna continue listening to it today because i have like a lot going on and it's just easier to listen to the audio so maybe it'll get better i don't know a lot going on that i just like didn't expect so that's where i'm at right now i don't even think i'm halfway yet which this book is kind of longer than i thought it was gonna be i think it's like four over 400 pages yeah a little over 400 which i feel like is a lot but there's a lot going on and there's a lot that needs to be resolved so i guess that's probably why i was really excited about this one too but maybe things will pick up but right now it's not looking too good off because the glare is kind of annoying but i ended up dnfing girl abroad i don't remember how many pages i got in i'm gonna check that in a little bit so i can write it down when we do like our final how many pages i read today but i dnf'd it because i could not connect to any of the characters i feel like our main girl was a little bit insufferable like she was just making all the wrong decisions and i didn't really want to see it blow up in her face like just the fact that one of the love interests has a girlfriend is enough for me to dnf i don't really love that but i just couldn't connect to any of the characters and the plot of what was going on i'm really upset about it because I wanted to love that book or at least enjoy it so a little upset that I had to DNF it but I knew I wasn't going to give it above a three at most probably so put that one down which again I'm really upset about. I'm still reading Quicksilver. I'm going to read that later tonight like I said it's my bedtime book. I started Play Along the fourth book in the Windy City series by Liz Tom Ford. If you didn't know at my last reading vlog I'm pretty sure I read Caught Up which is the third book and it's about Kai. He's a baseball player and then the first two are about two other characters in this world. They play 
two different sports. This fourth book is the brother of the last book, Caught Up, and he's also on the baseball team. This is Isaiah, and he showed up a lot in Caught Up, and I was so excited when I found out this was his book because he just had like that playful, like golden retriever, like learny personality, and I could not wait to see his dynamic with our other main character, Kennedy, which you get in the epilogue of Caught Up, kind of how their relationship or like their dynamic starts. And, like it gives you a little bit that gets you excited for this one. This one came out, I think, last week or this week. I don't know what date, but it just came out and I'm so excited. I knew I wanted to start it. So it's Kindle Unlimited, all of them are. So I downloaded it. I've only read the little prologue. So I'm on page 13, not very far in, but I'm really excited. Like I said, Isaiah is very like playful, outgoing, flirty. He likes to tease, but then he has like the underneath, which I think we're going to get into in this book, which I'm really excited about. And then Kennedy is hired as the only woman staff to work on the baseball team that Isaiah is on. One of the tropes in here, I'm really excited for it. I can't I can't wait because we got a lot of them, little glimpses of them in the last book, like I said, so I'm excited. I feel like there's going to be a lot of good scenes and quotes and all that in here. Very excited about it. So I'm going to continue reading. I can't wait. I feel like I'm going to fly through this book. Her writing is really, really fast paced, really easy to read, really easy to picture too, which I've talked about a lot. I don't really, I don't know why I can't picture things when I'm reading books. It's all vibes, but for some reason when I'm reading hers, I can like picture. She like describes things perfectly for my little brain over here to understand and like picture and visualize so that's always fun and i also said in the last book that i read in the reading vlog she does such a good job of combining like the sports romance like the sports part of the romance into the romance like the combination like she doesn't give too much of like play by plays and like descriptions of the game like yeah he has games and he's like the shortstop and whatever but she does a good job combining it and doesn't get like overly descriptive of the sports because that's not what i'm here for and i'm sure that's not what we're all here for we're here for the romance but he just happens to be an MLB player. Now I'm going to continue reading. I'm so excited. Hello guys. It is actually now Wednesday. I didn't talk at all yesterday or update at all because I read a grand total of 36 pages yesterday. I had so much to do. I was busy all day long and the only time I had to read was before bed and starting to read literally put me to bed. So I started with Quicksilver. I read about 33 pages of that and then I started getting tired. So I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll read some of Play Along. It'll keep me up a bit longer because I don't have to like think as much because with fantasy obviously and I'm still in the beginnings of it. I had to use some brain power so then i put it on or i opened up play along and I ended up reading three pages <laughs> put me right to bed fell asleep so i read 36 pages yesterday which is totally fine amount of pages to read i was so busy but hoping today i read a bunch more also if you're wondering this is not supposed to be like that i put my shirt on and the scene came off so i'm pretending it's a new design for the shirt but unfortunately my tank top did break. Anyway, today my goal is to read, if not all of Play Along, majority of it. That's the one I'm gonna focus on more today because I would feel a lot better if I finished at least one book. Reading two at the same time, I do it sometimes, but right now I feel like it's taking me forever. So I'm gonna focus on Play Along today. I'm enjoying it so much. Like I said, when I started it, Isaiah's like character, not character, well yeah, he's a character, but his like personality is so outgoing and he's I feel like the playful guy, but he has stuff underneath that I think Kennedy is going to pull out of him, which I'm really excited about. The trope in here is so good like it's perfect for them because Isaiah is like he has to kind of grovel and I love me a groveling man like he has to work for it and I love seeing a man work for something so that's kind of what's happening right now we're still early on in it I'm like maybe 60 pages in Isaiah is just so down bad and I love that so much and one of the quotes that I highlighted says she laughs again and it's then I realize I don't hear that sound often I'll have to work on that like he has to work on it like he's going to work on it He's gonna do it. Really excited about that. Really good so far. The banter is really good. You can see that Kennedy's like almost like trying not to give in to him. Like it's just their dynamic is so good. I'm loving it. And then for Quicksilver, just a little update. I'm really enjoying that one. I haven't read a fantasy in a while, so it's definitely fun to like switch it up. And like I said, it takes a lot of brain power in the beginning of it because you're learning a lot of the history of the fantasy world, the politics. But what I like is how she's like showing it to us and telling us it's not like straightforward. We're learning with our main character, Cyrus. Like she has no idea. So as she's learning, we're learning. So it's fun. To go along with her rather than the author just telling us like this is the history we're like learning along with our main character and there was one part in this book i was reading i don't know if i read it yesterday i think it was like two nights ago but for some reason this main character his name is kingfish he did something and i read it and i was like this is like the same mannerisms and the way he said it and like the way he's acting as damon from vampire diaries now kingfish is not a vampire nothing about this book is giving vampire diaries it was just like the way he acted reminded me of damon now i also haven't watched vampire diaries since maybe 2020 2021 like it's been a very long time but for some reason as soon as i read this scene i was like okay why 
why did he give Damon there? But if you like Vampire Diaries, I'm just gonna read to you the mannerisms in this little scene. They're going to this one place they have to go look for something, whatever, but the doors were closed and locked and she was like, should be a knock? And then it says, an arrogant smile curled up at the corner of his mouth. Sure, he said, as if this was a charming suggestion made by a single brain-celled idiot. A second later, he slammed the sole of his boot against the wood and then the door was on the ground in pieces. Knock, knock. He stepped to one side, holding his hand out in a mockery of manners, gesturing for me to go ahead of him. I don't think anyone's home. Like the way he was like, knocked it down, was like, knock, knock. Kind of just gave Damon vibes for me. Not sure why, but as soon as I read that, it like, I just pictured him doing it in my head. I don't know if anyone else could agree with me or if anyone's read this could also agree with me. I'm not saying that Kingfish, whatever, is giving Damon. It was just this one scene. Anyway, it's going really well though. It's going slow just because again, I'm reading two books at the same time, but my focus today is gonna be on play along. I'm on page, oh. Why is it locations? I'm 21 or 22% of the way through play along right now. So I'll give some updates on this one probably majority of the day and fingers crossed I can get a lot through this because I want to, not that I want to move on to another book, but I want to complete a book. It's been a while since I finished a book. It's been maybe a week at this point since I finished a book. So it feels like a long time. Sorry I didn't speak at all yesterday. Just like nothing was going on. I read for a grand total. It had to be of 30 minutes max yesterday, which is totally okay. It's just like, that's why we're updating now on Wednesday. So I'll come back with updates and I'm very excited to continue reading. Both of these books are going very well. things in books that get me like i'm reading play along right now and she works as the athletic something for the baseball team that isaiah's on and she works so much during the day they have her working so much that she doesn't eat and isaiah just like brings her food brings her like it's just so simple but like he knows that she's not like thinking about it or planning on eating like she's just not eating and he brings her stuff and she's like i'm working he's like you need to eat before i think i filmed my reaction i didn't even realize it was happening there was a scene if i didn't say what the trope of this book was i don't think it really gives it away but it's fake marriage like marriage of convenience fake marriage whatever and let me find the quote i already have 30 highlights on this book like it's so good but her parents are very cold and they're only in everything for business arrangements and don't really care about anything so her mom was was saying something telling kennedy something like stop pouting or something isaiah goes pout she's sitting here entirely emotionless excuse me i stand from my seat watch your fucking words when you're speaking to my wife <laughs> and you know what did i see that coming yeah i did does it happen in every book that has this trope of course it does will i eat it up every single time without a doubt like that was so good and then just like continued into like the next page like there was just more of him like sticking up for her when she just like doesn't in front of her family but so good i'm loving their dynamic so much this oh, i love them so much and it's so crazy like i keep saying i that's the first book in this whole series but every book since then has been so good like if you like banter in books and books that make you giggle but also has depth between both of the main characters like there's stuff underneath the surface of them these books are for you and if you like sports romances it doesn't really fall heavily onto the sports but if you like an athlete reading about an athlete highly recommend the series one of the things i think that this author does really really well is the found family trope like i recommend even if you want to read this one i do recommend reading the other ones maybe not mile high if you want to try it out just personally i didn't like it so never really recommend it but you see the characters from all of the other ones into each book and just like knowing them other than the first one all their like relationship dynamics and then all of them like in the same room up until this book like something about that i just love so much and that's why i love interconnected series because you read one couple's book and you get so connected to them and it's like their story's over but you still see them you still see like how their lives are going and their interactions with the couple you're reading about right now and i just love that so much like the other series i think about is chestnut springs like something about the found family in there is so good and i feel the same about this one like when i see all the other characters like ryan and indy or i literally just read caught up this month like a few weeks ago when i see kai which is isaiah's brother so he's in here a little bit more but when i see kai and miller i just get so excited because i'm like i know you guys are in love and i'm obsessed with you guys anyway if you 
can tell I'm really enjoying it. Remember when I said I wanted to finish this book? I don't know why I thought I could do that. I don't read as fast as my mind thinks I do. I'm 41% of the way through right now. I'm gonna read for like an hour or two, so I do think I'll get hopefully halfway or 60%, something like that. And we're finishing this book tomorrow. We are finishing tomorrow. Hopefully I can focus on Quicksilver. I'll probably start another romance in the meantime. I kind of want to read Summer Romance by Edible Monaghan. Monaghan? Monaghan? I don't know how to say her last name, but that's been on my TBR since it came out and I've been seeing incredible reviews for it and I liked her other two books. I loved Nora Goes Off Script and it seems like it'll be very fast paced also from reading in the other two. They're really really fast paced. I love her writing. She like gets right to the point. I think that's what I need right now. I'm not in a slump but for some reason like it's taking me a while to read and while that's not a bad thing it feels like I'm reading slower than usual or I'm like I'm not paying attention for long periods of time. I don't know. Loving this book, clearly. I have so many highlights already. I'm gonna continue reading. I'm very excited to see where this goes. The way that they just like play off each other. <sighs> it's so good. I should not be giggling like this. Like, not even words on paper, words on a Kindle. They're like bantering back and forth. She goes, because you're obsessed with me. He says, I think that's the perfect word to describe how I feel about you, doc. I don't really have to give you the context of that because I don't wanna give anything away, but I just, I can't. Oh my God, I did not think <laughs> this book was gonna make me cry. That was literally the last thing I thought this book was gonna do. Happy tears though. These are not sad tears. These are very much happy tears. I just didn't expect that from this book. Yeah, I've been giggling and laughing, but now I'm crying. What's going on? That was so good. I'm honestly doing pretty well reading. It's been maybe like an hour or so, two hours since my last update. I'm now 60% of the way through. Kind of killing it. I feel like I could get pretty far tonight. I'm just enjoying it so much. Like you don't want to put it down and that's when you know. It's good. Like I'm eating this up. I'll update you guys tomorrow on the page count I read today and then probably will end up finishing it tomorrow. Like there's no way. Like I'm probably gonna fall asleep any minute now. Not really though. I'm kind of like not tired. I'll update you guys tomorrow on the page count and if I finish like I think there's no way I'm gonna finish it but there's like a 1% chance <laughs> up again happy tears are back so he does something for her and she's like how do you remember that he says i remember every single thing about you kenny in case you haven't figured it out already you're my favorite subject to study i don't want this to be over i really don't want this to be over okay i just finished play along why did i forget the name of it that was i don't know okay i don't know what was put into that book. I think I've realized male main characters that I really enjoy are ones that are golden retriever. I don't really love the broody grumpy ones as much. I don't know. Something about Isaiah and his personality and the way that he was just so down bad. Like if you like Guy Falls First, Guy Falls Harder, like you are going to love Isaiah in this book. But again, highly recommend reading the other ones first before this one. I'm trying to think of a rating. In my head, like it just was so fun, entertaining. The dynamic was so good. The banter was so good. The storyline was good. The spice didn't take away from anything like it was just everything made sense to the story and i like ate it up the whole entire time like i couldn't sleep last night because i wanted to finish it i didn't finish it though this morning i did before i get into my rating and if i have anything else to say on the book i want to talk about the page count from yesterday which was wednesday so i only read play along yesterday i was gonna read some of quicksilver but i wanted to finish this i got like 70 something percent into it last night before i fell asleep so i ended up reading 235 pages of this book yesterday and then that's all i've read yesterday which is 
is a huge contrast and step up from Tuesday when I read 30 pages. Once you like really get into a book, I feel like that's just the best feeling. Like when you don't want to put a book down, it was so good. I think I'm going to give it 4.75 stars. It's one of those books where sometimes I'd be like, yeah, this is five stars. Like I'm obsessed with them, which I am, but I don't think it's like fully five. So like it's like right there. Like I had the most amazing time reading this. I think this is my favorite out of all of them in the series. Caught Up is like very close second. I feel like Caught Up was a little bit more slow. Like this pacing, like it didn't slow down. Everything was just so good. Like I loved it. The found family in here, like I said, is so good. Seeing everyone like grow together and seeing them from the past books together. And then Isaiah just being really patient and making Kennedy feel really comfortable and giving her her options, but also like being there for her. And then Kennedy just like seeing her growth from the beginning and seeing her just like learn more about herself was just like so nice to read and like picture in my head. And I'm just obsessed with them. And then there's other characters in here like Monty, who's actually the head coach of the baseball team that they're on. He's kind of like a younger father to Miller, who's the main character of Caught Up, but I like want a book on him and I know we're not getting one, but like I would love a book on him. I love him. They keep describing him as a really attractive like 40 year old with tattoos and he's really young and playful. He was a baseball player. Like, I just like love him. There's only one more book left that comes out next year. Like I need it now. It's about, well, I guess I won't say who it's about, but highly recommend. I will not shut up about this book. This was the highlight so far of my reading journey this month and I'm really happy that I finally finished it and kind of got me into like now I want to pick up another book and read like earlier this week when I started reading I wasn't really like I was slowly reading I wasn't very motivated I guess I now have to actually go get my car service which is not fun like at all I think I'm gonna bring a book with me to read there I don't know if I'm gonna read Quicksilver because I feel like it's gonna slow me down and tomorrow's our last day of like reading mood reading this week so I want to pick up a book that's very fast paced I could just kind of binge and then throughout the rest of the month I think I'm gonna continue Quicksilver so I don't know if I'll be talking about it in this video anymore I don't know we'll see but I don't know what I'm gonna read I'm thinking some are romance I'll pick up and bring with me while I sit there and wait for my car to get serviced. Don't know what they're doing in my car, but I know I have to bring it in. So far today, I don't know how many pages I've read, but I think a little over 100 pages. I had to finish the book. Not had to. I wanted to. I was so excited to finish the epilogue too. Usually I don't like epilogues in books. This one was like 18 minutes long and I was like, oh my god. Like that is like way too long for an epilogue, but perfectly tied in everything from the story, all, like all the characters and like it was just so good. I ate it up. I ate up everything about this book. I'm gonna pick out a book. I need to leave and we'll see <laughs> what I read next. I have literally no idea. I just know it needs to be probably a romance and fast paced, which is like giving summer romance by Annabelle Monaghan. Monaghan? So probably that one, but we'll see. Friday. So yesterday I ended up finishing Play Along. So I've been thinking about it since yesterday and I'm like, is this a five star book? Like, is it? I don't know. I finished that and I started Summer Romance and this one's been really good so far. I think I only got maybe 70, 72 pages in. I wanted to get 100 pages in before I fell asleep, but that didn't happen. But I ended up reading yesterday a total of 208 pages. So I read 135 of Play Along before I finished it and then 73 of this one. So 208 pages, which is really, really good. I feel like I don't realize I read that many pages because I finished the book and then started this one. So it doesn't feel like a lot because there's only 70 pages into this, if that makes any sense. But today, I don't think I'm going to be reading much. I'll probably read 20 pages at most because it's a really really busy day and I'm so sad because it's our last day of reading together. This morning I had lots of errands to run and I had to finish up a video. I'm uploading one right now and lots has been happening. I have a meeting in 20 minutes and then I'm going to a Luke Combs concert later tonight so I'm not gonna have a lot of time to read but hopefully I'll get a few pages in really praying because so far this is really really good. It's about our main character Allie who got recently divorced. Her mom passed away a few years ago and now she's co-parenting. You know she's kind of struggling to get back out there and one day she decides to change out of her sweatpants, put on a nice outfit, take off her her ring and go out into the world and she has a kind of like a little meet cute moment with this guy at the dog park. Actually it's not that cute but like it's one of those scenes I feel like you would see in an Abby Jimenez book in the beginning because she's so good at the meet cutes but her dog ends up peeing on the leg of a guy and then they end up striking up something, going on a date and whatever. But what I love so much about the back of this book, the summary of this book is how vague it is because something happened early on in the book, you find something out that's not on the back of it and it like took me by surprise, pleasantly surprised. So I really really love 
love that the back of this is very vague. It's just saying how Ellie is trying to get back out there and then she runs into this guy and that's it. What's wrong with a little summer romance, you know? So I love that so much. The writing style, which I've said before, I read Nora Goes Off Script and Same Time Next Summer. Really, really fast paced. She puts in like the perfect parts of each scene where it's never ever dragging out. Like the pacing is very good and the book is always flowing really well. And if I were to compare her writing style to anyone, I feel like she's a mix of like Abby Jimenez and even like Emily Henry because she has some really good lines, which not in this one just yet, but from the last two that I've read, there's some really pretty lines. And then some of like the, the dialogue and like the banter and like the relationships between different characters gives kind of Abby Jimenez vibes. I don't really know. That's how I'm feeling about her as an author and I'm really enjoying her writing. So I'll give some updates if I do end up reading more today. I just can't see myself reading a lot, which is so sad. So I don't think I'm gonna be finishing this book in this video. If I do end up finishing it, maybe over the weekend, I will give my last update and I'll tell you how I felt about it. But just for the page count today, I can't see myself reading much. This is a moon reading vlog and when I have stuff to do, I obviously don't end up reading. So I'm gonna go to my meeting right now. Hopefully I can read a little bit after that before I have to leave. And yeah, I'll give you guys some updates. And if you're wanting an update on Quicksilver, I'll probably hopefully finish it throughout this month and it'll be in my July wrap up. So I'm sorry to leave you hanging on that one, but I haven't read a page from it in a couple days. Oh my god, wait, before I go, yesterday, remember I had to get my car serviced? I got to the Jeep dealership and they were like, we don't have any appointments today. And I was like, well, I made it on the app and I showed her and she was just like, so I have it next week. I didn't end up staying there, which is totally fine with me. I didn't have to sit there for an hour. So I ended up going to Barnes and Noble instead. So I wanted to show you the little books that I bought. I saw so many new releases while I was there. I forgot that Christina Lauren had a new book and Julie Soto, there was a new book. And then I saw Sarah Adams. I think one of her older books got republished or her covers are getting renewed. I ended up getting a photo finish by Elsie Silver. I want to read all the Gold Rush Ranch series and I really love the cover that she's doing. So I'm going to put it on my Elsie Silver shelf. Really excited about that one. And then I ended up picking up Solitaire by Alice Man. Since I've been talking about Heartstopper so much, everyone's saying that she has other books in the same world. So I went to go look and I got this one. And then I saw that before reading the fifth volume of Heartstopper, which is the next one I have to read, I should read this little novella about Nick and Charlie. So I'm going to do that, then read the fifth one, then probably read this, which is about Charlie's sister in Heartstopper, her little story, which I'm really excited to read like an actual novel that's not like a graphic novel by this author and see how I like it. So putting that next to my Heartstopper books. So we have my little Elsie corner of my shelf and then my Heartstopper little corner. Okay, now I'm actually done. I'm gonna go to my meeting and I will give some updates when I have any. Hello guys. So it is actually now Monday. I ended up reading no pages on Friday, which was honestly what I expected. I was so busy with work stuff in the morning and then also I had a concert at night. So there was no time to really read. A lot was going on. So I read no pages, which honestly is perfectly fine. There's some days that I'm not reading anything. Sometimes I'm reading a lot of stuff. One day I could be reading a full book and one day no words are being read from these eyes. I did want to wait though until I finish this book to at least give an update. So I binged this yesterday. I read, like I said, I think it was like 70-ish pages on Friday and then Sunday I finished the whole thing. I could not put this down. So if I had the time on Friday, I probably would have finished this whole entire thing. So I wanted to give a rating on this. I'm going to talk more about it in my monthly wrap up, but I ended up giving this one 4.75 stars. Highly, highly recommend this. If you really like Emily Henry, Abby Jimenez, like specifically those two, I feel like spoke out to me when I was reading this. Some of the quotes reminded me like Emily Henry type writing and some of the scenes like a meet cute or different character traits I feel like really reminded me a lot of one of Abby Jimenez's books. So those like put together morphed into how I felt about this book and I really 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 enjoyed it. I love how the back of it is vague and you get so much more in the book and it was more than just a woman trying to find herself again after a divorce, a loss of a parent, and co-parenting three kids. Like it was more than that. There was talks of so much going on and it had like the perfect Perfect, perfect amount of just focusing on our main character and the women's fiction of all of that and then the romance and I feel like the romance even if it wasn't in every single part of this book when it did come up it was so sweet it wasn't overpowering and I feel like our other main character Ethan was really just there to be patient with our main character and show her different things about herself and like help her become who she like wants to be but like not in any like overpowering way and some of the lines in here are so good they're like those lines that are really like subtle and sweet but when you read them you're like that actually hits really hard. I underlined a few of them so let me see if I could find some. The first one that I underlined says he smiles when he sees me like I'm the thing he's been looking everywhere for. It's kind of like quotes like that that are very very simple but they kind of pack a punch when you're reading it and you're like in the story. There was another one let me try to find it because it was like the same kind of vibe as that one and I love those kind of quotes. They were talking about something and she was like you're not a person for me to date you live in another state whatever you've already told me you're unreliable and he's like remember when I said I'd meet you at seven and then I showed up at seven maybe 
become totally reliable when it comes to you. I don't know. It's just like really, really sweet. It has more to it than I feel like you would get or you would think you're going to get from the summary of it, which is exactly how I felt or how I feel about all of Abby Jimenez's books, especially Just for the Summer. If you enjoy Just for the Summer, I feel like you'd really enjoy this one. So those are my thoughts on this. I'm going to give probably more during my wrap up, get more into how I felt about it and everything. But I just wanted to give a little bit of a review because we only finished one other book this week. If we want to calculate all of the pages I've read this week, let's add all of these up. So I read a total of 809 pages this past week, which is a very good number. It's not as much as I feel like I usually read, obviously, when I'm filming other videos and trying to get books done. But this is just genuinely in my life when I'm doing a lot of other work and other personal things, what reading I can get done. Got a book done in that week. I started some of another book and I finished over the following weekend another one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I read in this video. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Highly recommend Play Along and Summer Romance. Those are two good books. Honestly, I didn't read a lot this week, a lot of pages, but I've read two 4.75 books. And you know what? That is a win to me. So thank you guys for coming along with me. Mood reading. I love these vlogs. It's just like very chill and just what I'm feeling reading that day. Let me know if you guys enjoyed. I hope you did and I'll see you hopefully in the next one. Bye!